Guess what? Nothing moves. Why? They're equal. It is not until one of those pressures chooses or decides not to exert the same amount of pressure. Then and only then can the other pressure overtake them. Why? Because they're no longer equal. Young people, no one can ever get you to do something you don't already want to do. No one can ever make you drink unless you want to. No one can ever make you take drugs unless you want to. No one can make you violent unless you want to. No one can stop you from studying for a test unless, of course, you want to. Quit blaming other people, man. Start following your dreams and realize this. I understood this in high school, but I understand it even now, years later. Making the right choice in life will never be the most popular choice or the easiest choice you'll ever make in your life. But something I've learned, it's still the right choice. You just can't give up. I'm real big on not giving up. For example, years ago I did a sporting event. It's called the International Ironman Triathlon. When I did it, it was televised on ABC, Wide World of Sports, it's now televised on NBC Sports, it's all over the corner, why this is what it is. You swim two and a half miles in the ocean, you get out of the ocean, you bicycle 112 miles, you then get off the bicycle and run a 26.2 mile marathon, you do this one right after the other with no rest in between. It was one of the hardest things that I have ever done in my life. In fact, in the December before the race, the Pittsburgh uh, Press, uh, is it still around, Pittsburgh Press? They did a full page article on me in the Sunday paper. They entitled it this, Suicidal Race, His Chance to Live. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. I just didn't wake up one day, fly over to Hawaii and say, here I am. I had to train for nine solid months, seven days a week. It didn't matter if it's hot, cold, raining, snowing, whatever, I had to train and I trained alone. And during those nine months, I had a lot of people look at me and say, Steve, you can't do this. But it was in here. Now, understand something. In this world, you're going to have people tell you, you can't stay off of drugs, you can't stay off of alcohol, you can't pass that test, you can't make that grade. Now, you can choose to listen to them and let them crush your dreams. Or you can choose to follow your heart and make the right choices. It's your choice. Well, here was my training schedule, giving you an idea of what I had to do every day when I was at my peak training. Every morning at 5 o'clock, I'd wake up, be on the road no later than 5.30. Depending on the day, I'd run anywhere from 12 to 17 miles. At 1 o'clock, started my afternoon workouts. Those consisted of biking anywhere from 30 to 60 miles, then go swim a minimum of 3 miles, lift weights for an hour. 5.30 every afternoon, I was home. 10.30 every night, I was in bed. That was my life. Five months into my training, I developed what's called shin splints. I have really flat feet. The only way I can describe shin splints to you, without having that arch of my foot to take the pounding running like a shock absorber in a car, what happens is shin splints is when your calf muscle starts to peel off your shin bone. It's kind of painful. So I went to the doctor, he x-rayed my legs, he came in, he said, Steve, you have a really bad case of shin splints. I said, well, what do we need to do? He says, you need to stop running for about the next four to six months, and your legs should heal up without having to put cast on. I still have said, doctor, thank you for taking my $35. Thank you for your time, but in four more months, I'll be in Hawaii. Two months later, I got to the place I couldn't wear socks and went over my ankles because I couldn't stand for anything to touch my shins. It even got so bad, I couldn't put my legs under the sheet of my bed because the weight of the sheet hurt too bad. So one day I finished running, I looked down, my legs are all swollen. I'm like, dude, that's not good. <laughs> I went to the doctor, I go, yo, doc, I don't think I got shin splints anymore. The x-ray my legs came back in and says, congratulations, you don't have shin splints. I said, that's great. He goes, you're an idiot. I said, well, I know that, but I don't have shin splints, duh. He said, didn't I tell you to stop running two months ago? I go, I don't remember. <laughs> so I put out my old x-ray. He said, you see your bones here how nice and dark they are? I said, good bones. Hi, he says, they were. And then he put out my new x-rays. There's these little white squinting lines running through both of my shin bones. I said, what is that, bad film? He goes, no, stupid, bad legs. Those little white lines are what we call stress fractures, cracks running through both your shin bones. You have broken both your shins. I'm like, get out of here. He goes, you want me to touch them? I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm like, that's pretty serious. What are we doing about it? He says, we aren't doing anything. When you finish here, you're going to go across the street to the clinic. They're going to put cast on both your legs from your knees down. At the end of six weeks, you come in and we take the cast. I said, okay, doc, I promise you. One last question. How am I going to keep these cast dry when I swim? And then when I run, is it going to break the bottom of the cast off? 
He looks at me and goes, you really are as stupid as you look. It's over, done, and finished. I said, doctor, thank you for taking my $35. Thank you for your time. But in two more months, I'll be in Hawaii. Just getting ready to walk out the door. And he says this to me, Steve, I have to tell you one last thing. When you get off that bike after cycling 112 miles, you go to run, the change in your muscle groups, get snap your legs like two twigs, you need to know that. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> I went back to my apartment, I had to make a choice, the choice is here, and I gotta emphasize something to you. The last two months of my training was done under this doctor's very strict supervision. Next day, him and I had a long talk. If at any time, he would've said my legs were getting worse, I would've stopped training. But to help my legs, the thing I do every morning is fill up a garbage can full of crushed ice and water, chip two holes, and drop both of my legs in for 20 minutes. I'd have a pillow over my face to muffle the sound of me screaming because it hurt so bad. Then at the end of 20 minutes, lift my legs out, set them on the floor, wait for them to thaw out. I had a lot of people look at me and say, Steve, you can't do this. But it was in here. Valentine's Day. 450 men and women from all over the world down. They parked a boat a mile and a quarter out into the ocean. We were to swim out to the boat, around the boat, and back to the shore. That day, I started in over 300th position. The cannon went off at 7.15. We all started for that boat at one time. What a zoo. I got kicked, punched, scratched. I had my bathing suit pulled down to my ankles. <laughs> I get my bathing suit back, and I start swimming, and it happens. I get bit on the back of my leg. No, not by a fish. Someone fed me! <laughs> I got a hickey on the back of my leg. Hey, can I be honest? I'm going to be. I felt cheap. And used. Anyway, I went around the boat. I realized I wouldn't get kicked, punched, wouldn't get bit anymore either. When I climbed out of the water, I realized there was more people behind me, behind me than there was in front of me. When I climbed out, I was 26 out of the water. I had spent two and a half miles in 56 minutes. Showered salt water out, off my body. Got on my bike, 30 miles in a bike race. I just came down this real long hill. So I mean, that little sprocket in the back. I go to shift and the derailleur breaks in half. Now the hills in Hawaii are a lot like around here. They go anywhere from three quarters of a mile to a mile and a half long. You add on a 40 mile an hour headwind coming right off the ocean. You know you don't climb those on a little sprocket. I went to shift and my derailleur breaks in half. Now, I got off trying to fix it, people rode by me. I got on trying to ride, people went by me. I hadn't been on off that bike at least 20 different times. At one point, no lie, I got so frustrated. I picked that bicycle up over my head and I was gonna smash it into a thousand pieces. But I put it back down, I said, I gotta finish. When I got done biking, they put me on a scale to weigh me, they told me I went from 26th to 240th position. I was just glad I wasn't dead last. I stood on that scale though, and my head was hanging because my neck muscles couldn't support my head anymore. I had second degree burns cover my entire left forearm, my right cap, that's the kind of burns that blister. Because that day it was 95 degree air temperature, but the heat bouncing up off the black lava fields was over 137 degrees. I thought they were gonna have to surgically remove that bicycle seat out of my fanny. I go in a small room to change my shoes, 15, 20 other guys changing there too, but something went wrong. A lot of those guys said, you know what? I only sit down for a minute. It's only one time I'll get up again. And they never did, why? Simple. No longer was the race carried here, the race went to here and that let him down. Well, I wasn't about to sit down. So I leaned in the corner room, I balanced myself against the corner, I put my shoes on like this, out the door I went, first mile was absolutely horrible. All I kept hearing that doctor say to me, Steve, your legs can snap like two twins. Six miles in the marathon, there's a lady standing on the road with a garden hose squirting people to cool them off. Instead of squirting me waist up, she squirts me waist down, soaks my running shoes. Have you ever rubbed wet shoes and socks on? Yeah. You know that squishing sound that it makes? Well then that causes friction, and friction causes heat, and then heat causes blisters. Well, I had so much callus on my feet, somehow the blisters developed underneath the calluses. It was kind of painful. But I figured, well, we only have like 17 more miles to go. We can do this. Seven miles left. I 